attacked the 43-kilometre prologue course right from the off and gave a clear indication of his weekend's ambitions. The 3.5-litre V6 Nissan hardbody responded like a racehorse in sight of the finish, and Cox and Pitchford set the fastest time of the day. was also holding nothing back at the wheel of the second proudly South African Nissan. A tight and twisty course through the local motocross circuit called for intense concentration and a cool navigator. Nissan Motorsport had a third hard body in the field for Duncan Foss and Henny Testircher. It was the brand new 4-litre Class SP pickup, built at the team's mid-rand workshops and making its official competition debut with an impressive third fastest time in the prologue. The face of the 2002 off-road champion shows intense concentration in his first event in a year. Will Battershill and Reg Sutton scored their first pole position in the special vehicle category with a spirited drive in the BSI Rob Steel Jimco. Gerard Duplessis and brother-in-law Ferdi Sierkes were having their second outing of the year in the Jimco after winning the Sun City 400 in July and were to record the second fastest time. Championship leaders Marsh and Whitehouse put the V8 power of the Nashua Mobile back to good use to score the third fastest time at the end of a hot and dusty day. The Harpers were less than two seconds slower than Marsh, making it two Jimcos and two bats in the top four, covered by a minute and a half. Mark Cronier and Birkin headed the Class D contingent in their Castrol Toyota and put in the fourth fastest time among the special vehicles, four minutes behind the more powerful Nissans. Quickest privateer in Class D was local businessman Arnold Duplessis in his Coca-Cola-backed BB Auto Nissan Hardbody, who was just half a minute slower than the factory Toyota. Clint Gibson and Marcel Trithui had a good run in the Gibson plant hire bat to record fifth fastest time among the specials. Heavy dust on the prologue was a taste of what was to come on Saturday. Schroeder and Harris adopted a cautious approach in the Class D Ford Racing Ranger and completed a trouble-free run in sixth place among the pickups. <laughs> Nardis Alberts and Colin Hunter were debuting a new Nissan V6 engine in their Ace Co and were delighted to emerge fastest among the Class S contingent. Spectators had a great vantage point of the section through the 4x4 track. Hutchison and Ormerod pushed hard in the motor right bat, looking for the best possible starting position. They finished 7th in the special vehicle category and 1st in Class B, less than 6 seconds ahead of reigning champions Taylor and Deschelaine in the JRE. Privateers Chris Fisser and Joppe Badenhorst attacked the course with enthusiasm and had the Tyco Trucks Toyota Hilux airborne on the 4x4 track. They were rewarded with the fastest time in Class E and an excellent 7th overall in the production vehicle category. Reigning Class B champions Taylor and Deschelaine were determined to give championship leaders Hutchison and Ormerod a good run for their money in the JRE and were pleased to have kept their rivals in their sights. Father and son Bez and Etienne Besaidnot were third in Class B in the Adenka, Sandmaster a slim three seconds behind Taylor and Deschelaine.
Solo driver Herman Solwell yumps his mighty mag to fourth in Class B. Nick Gosler back to full fitness after a major accident at last year's Sun City event, and George Bowie in the Coppenon Hotel Super Team race car was second quickest in Class S. Fast Class A combination Gary Bertolt and Siegfried Rousseau were delayed by a puncture and an overheating engine in their Advansoft eye burst bat, finishing an unaccustomed 12th in the special vehicle category. Kutsia Labeskachny and Johan Geber had only finished one event so far this year and were looking for a trouble-free run in their Class D race Sonics Nissan Hardbody. So it was a three-car red wash at the top of the results, with Cox throwing down the gauntlet to his more experienced teammate, Krobler. Most of the major players in the special vehicle category were up at the sharp end of the field, and the scene was set for an exciting battle for honours in the first Ford Motorite Limpopo 400. It's the first time here in Polokwane, and uh, it's new for everybody, and we've just had really tight sections, riverbeds, rocks, thick, thick sand, and it was very technical uh, this time and I knew the time trial is the most important thing if we want to do well tomorrow because of the dust. We're nearing the end of winter and there's just been no rain and uh, so we put the hammer down today and uh, I think we're 20 something seconds quicker than Hannes and them which is brilliant for us and uh, tomorrow obviously if we could win we don't know what the specials have done but if we can get it overall it's going to be good to be able to control in the dust tomorrow. <coughs> What were Foss's impressions of the new Class SP Nissan after his first competitive outing at the wheel? Um, you know, before I drove the, the, the T-Track, which is a lot more uh, modified, you could say, compared to the SP. Um, but I'm surprised. It, it's, uh, I've driven it probably four or five times now, and uh, it's a very impressive vehicle. You know, the, the, the motor, the gearbox, the suspension, everything works as a package, and it's, uh, I think it's going to surprise people as to how fast it's going to be. Are you happy with your payload time? We, we third overall. The two Nissan T trucks are ahead of, ahead of me. I would have liked to have been closer to them, but considering the circumstances, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Marsh, like most drivers and co-drivers, was complimentary about the prologue route and their first taste of off-road racing in the Polokwane area. Uh, the time trial was a, a bit of everything. It was really, uh, it was tough, hard work, a lot of uh, fast uh, sections, a lot of rough sections, uh, and required a lot of good navigation. And I think uh, Mike had a really good run there, and I think it helped us a lot not making any mistakes, because there were a lot of mistakes to be made there. The Harpers were also happy with their fourth place performance. Yeah, it looks like the car was good, the, the, the terrain was very rough, so I think it suited itself for my suspension, the way I set it up. I've done a few changes on that. Um, second, looks like we're second special vehicle, so following from winning the roof now, hopefully we can keep it together and do well tomorrow and see how it goes. Thanks very much. Castrol Toyota's Mark Cronier, a successful track racer, found the faster sections much to his liking. The product was, uh, was a tough, um, a bit of everything, a mix of rough, a mix of fast. I really enjoyed the fast. Um, there, were, there were times where I was really tucking down my head because we just get it a little bit quicker, but unfortunately that's as quick as, quick as we could go. The Hilux performed faultlessly, um, turned in really, really well in the fast stuff and it helped a lot, and even in the tight, and I think, again, the guys have done a great job. Let's just say thanks to the team. Despite an unusual incident on the start line, Motorite Racing's Hutchison was pleased with his and co-driver Ormerod's efforts. Yeah, we had a good product. We had a little bit of a rough start. My visor unclipped itself at the start line. So I wasted a few seconds trying to sort that out. Anyway, we got going. It was a superb route, a very tight and technical route. Um, so we attacked it with vengeance. We went as quickly as we possibly could without having any problems or making any mistakes. Um, so it all went well. I think we've done quite well on our time. We're waiting for the time still, so uh, hopefully we're up there. Unfortunately, we had no major mistakes, so we will be starting up at the front of our class, and that's where we want to be for tomorrow. It's the most important place to be. Ford Racing's Schroeder enjoyed a smooth, clean run in the Class D Ford Ranger. Oh, the route was lovely. I mean, if it's all like this tomorrow, really looking forward to it. It's such a variation of... Um, you get very fast stuff, and then you get very rocky stuff, and then you go through riverbeds, and then it's 
Uh, it's lovely, yeah. and I'm really looking forward to racing tomorrow. So the route, I mean, the prologue, we took it relatively easy um, over the rough stuff. I love that fast rally type stuff, you know, there we try to uh, make up time on the other guys. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, hopefully, I think we're in the top three in the Class D. And yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow.